Okay, pretty interesting interval we have here today. This one's going from zero to infinity, arctan sine x over x dx. Okay, first I was really kind of fooled by this one because I had to go back and check. I thought this was a duplicate of something I did from the UK integration. In the problem we did before, the numerator was exactly the same, but we had a sine x here. I think the bounds were different too, but anyway, what I want to do here is really the exact same method. But the interesting thing is this one really works out quite differently from that previous problem, even though we're doing the same kind of things on the same kind of problem. So to start with, what I wanna do is I wanna use Feynman's trick on this and we need to parameterize it. I'll parameterize it the same way we did with the other video and it's just gonna be, let's create a one coefficient on the sine x there and then we'll create some kind of function over here with a new variable a where the a will be that coefficient on the sine so that we're gonna have, this will become, we'll write this as arctan a, sine x over x. And so doing it this way, our goal is just gonna become, of course, when a is one, this, our original problem is just gonna be f of one. But the value we can use, notice when a is zero, you're gonna have arctan is zero, the whole thing's zero. So what we can come back to is this value that we can just say f of zero equals zero. Next, let's go ahead and differentiate on this. Differentiating with respect to a, using Feynman's trick, we're gonna bring our diff we're gonna differentiate inside the integral sign as a partial, so let's write it like this, and then let's figure out what's gonna be our constants and what's gonna be what we need to differentiate. Well, if we look at this like one over x, that's gonna be a constant, so let's bring it like way out here somewhere. And then we're just gonna differentiate this arctan a sine x piece. Going ahead with this, for our derivative of this, we just do the normal thing with arctan, we're gonna get one, over a squared sine squared x plus one. But now we need chain rule on this part right here with respect to a, sine x is just a constant, so what's gonna pop out is just the sine x because the derivative of a is one, and then we're gonna have this over this x here, dx. But then the reason this is so nice is because here we can use the Lobachevsky's integral formula because we've got our sine x over x. This would work the same way if we had sine squared x over x squared. So all we need to do is we need to check this piece in the formula, we're gonna call this the f of x. We can already see that this is gonna be an even function, but that's not quite enough as we need this to be pi periodic. So we're gonna need this check that we need f of pi plus or minus x to be equal to f of x. If you're used to these, you can probably already see that it's gonna work, but let's do the check anyway. So for our f of pi minus x, well, on sine, that's just going to be the supplementary angle formula. So sine pi minus x is just sine of x. So clearly this is going to work. If you plug that in, you're just going to get back the same thing. So that part is going to work. For f of pi plus x, in this, in this case, it's not quite as clean because sine pi plus x is going to be, now you get a minus sine x. But again, because we're squaring the sine, it's not going to matter. It's just going to be, it's going to change this and this is going to be squared. So again, we're gonna just get back our f of x. So in either case, this works and we can just go ahead and use this formula. So that's gonna reduce everything down pretty nicely because now coming back here for our f prime of a value, updating our bounds, now we're going zero to pi over two and we just need to integrate our f of x piece. So it's gonna be dx over a squared sine squared x plus one. And now I get to do one of my favorite things, which is multiply by secant squared x over secant squared x. I think there's different ways you could do it, but this works pretty good for me. So just because secant squared x is gonna be one over cosine squared x, so that's gonna create tangent right here. So let's see what happens. We get zero to pi over two, we're gonna have secant squared x in the numerator. Then we're still gonna have this a squared, but again, sine squared times secant squared is gonna be tan squared. And then we just need to multiply it by this one. But now in order to set up a u substitution, let's get everything in the denominator in terms of tangent. So for secant squared, we can use the identity that this is gonna be the same thing as tan squared x plus one. I think before I rewrite, let's get all the simplification at once. So like combining this with this, I can write this as a squared plus one times tan squared x. And then we're still gonna have this plus one over here. So let's just rewrite it with the denominator like this. And then for this thing, let's do the u substitution on it. Let me get rid of that stuff. So then our u, our u sub is gonna be just substituting for tangent. So I'll set u equal to tan of x. Then du is gonna be just 
secant squared x dx. Go ahead, update the bounds, plug in pi over two. 10 pi over two is going to infinity. Plug in a zero, 10 at zero is just zero. The whole numerator is gonna be our du value. So this is gonna turn into du a squared plus one, u squared plus one. Now this is pretty close to being ready for our arctan formula. I just don't like having, I don't really want the constant there in front of this. So let's factor that out front of the integral as a constant. So we'll have one over a squared plus one in front. Then that's gonna clean up the u squared with this other, this plus one is gonna get a little more complicated. So we're gonna have du, this is just u squared now. This is gonna become one over a squared plus one. In order to set up the formula, let's write this as, let's write this as a square root. And then this is all gonna be squared. So then we can just use our arctan formula on it. Go ahead and integrate. Let's bring, we'll still have this constant in front. Then for our arctan formula, we're gonna have the reciprocal of this in front. So we'll have, I'll just write it like this for now. We'll bring that into the numerator. And then we'll just have arctan, flip it again times u. So it's gonna be a squared plus one times u. And all this is gonna be evaluated zero to infinity. One thing I can do is combine this one with this one, like get rid of it and bring it into the denominator and write this as a square root right here. But when we evaluate this, you plug in zero here, arctan is zero, it's gonna be zero. You plug in infinity, this a squared plus one is not gonna matter, this part's going to pi over two. So what we have for our f prime of a value is gonna be pi over two times this stuff, a squared plus one. So this right here, this is gonna be our f prime of a value. We just need to deal with this now. We need to get back to f of a, because that's gonna be our goal. So let's see if we can clean this up and finish it off. Okay, now from here, in order to get it back to f of a, all I wanna do is let's just integrate this with respect to a. So doing it on both sides, integrate with respect to a, integrate with respect to a. This right here now, this is gonna be exactly f of a. Pi over two is gonna be a constant, so let's just rewrite to make it clear we're just integrating dx over square root a squared plus one now for this integral here you could do this two different ways that i know of anyway you could do trig substitution for tangent you could do trig substitution for hyperbolic sine or cinch those will both work out fine but i'm just going to use the formula on it and so what we'll do is the formula for this it's just going to be pi over two times natural log square root a squared plus one plus a add a plus c on there. And so you can kind of see how it works with the trig substitutions because this is actually our definition for inverse cinch of a. Anyway, let's go ahead with this and evaluate. But what we're gonna need is we don't really want the plus c in there. And we've got this from earlier that we can use in order to find our plus c value. So let's see how it's gonna go. I'll just plug in a zero everywhere on this. So pi over two, plug a zero in here. Here, a square root of one, that's just gonna be a one. And then our a, this one's gonna be a zero, but natural log of one is just zero. So this part goes away and we're saying the whole thing equals zero. Well, the way that works is gonna be if c equals zero. So let's just take this, make this go away. And this right here is gonna be our f of a value. And so now let's just recall what we're doing. We've got our f of a. We're saying if this is our f of a, we just created this a. And so in our original problem, the a value is just gonna be one, the coefficient on sine. So let's just plug in and finish it off. And so we just need to find out what happens when a equals one. That's gonna be our f of one value. So let's just plug everything in. So this is gonna become natural log. We got, let's just write it out. We'll have this as one squared plus one plus one. Reducing this, this just becomes square root of two plus one. So for my final solution on this, we just get pi over two, natural log, square root of two, plus one. Okay, there you have it. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.